I'm Ken Van Bogart. This is my son Brett from SportsTechnique.com and we're here at the Woodlawn Hitting Club in beautiful St. Pete for the winter clinics for Mike and Tunnel. We've got a variety of hitters that we've worked with down here demonstrating some Mike and Tunnel product and showing them how they can refine some of their swings and show them some of the very basic flaw breakdowns and how to correct them. Dave was one of the premier power hitters in his late 50s and early 60s before knee injury sidelined him and you remember doing what Dave when you were really good? Yeah, I had a high leg kick and a long stride. And you really went out and got the ball you told you had, me. You had, to, you had to go get it. You had to go get it and going to get it if you think about it in retrospect you're down here now with hardly any stride. Well going out and getting it probably meant you, you really had an aggressive stride forward you let your weight come ahead transfer and rotate and drive right? That's a fact. Today's objective is to set up a stronger push off the back foot and a longer stride for Dave. Let's take a look at three of today's top super major players, Jeff Hall, Chris Larson, and Greg Cannell, and see how they use a strong stride to help maximize the power of the hip rotation. <laughs> All you got to do is just snap a bit right? Yeah. Video, you'll see that I got it. What Sammy Sosa used to do. Yeah. You know how he always oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. a little twitch with his foot? That's what I do. I come up twice, and then when I kick, I push off here and I drag, I drag my back leg. And like I said, it's just it's just that initial heel, heel, boom. I'm trying to get everything, I'm trying to push and get my hips and throw my hands at it. I don't have strong legs at all. If I can go from here and know when, when I'm meeting that ball, if I'm out here and I'm already coming forward and thrusting, by the time I'm hitting, I should have all my force into it. Here we see a great thrust forward. The front foot hits hard, the weight transfers, and we convert this all to a great rotational drive. Throw and snap my wrist through it. I try to snap, but I mean it's just snap it. I mean, God darn. Woo! That's about uh, good missed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Distance with it for some reason. Well, he hits it a mile. You got to get a swing easy. That's good. Look like one of my golf shots. This looks so good. Oh, that's good. If you watch his feet, a lot of your power hitters, they're going to generate that. So he's open too. He just don't open up as much. But you see how his foot slides? It's the push. Well, I want you to know how it's Come on, girl. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> Where do you feel you generate most of your power at? From your from your back leg coming forward, or do you? That's what when I make it. That's all it hips and hands for me. I use my wrists and my hips. That's all. I so you can see that Canal, Hall, and Larson all have that good thrust forward. They get a good strong step forward from the push off of the back foot. The weight transfers and you can see how easy the hips rotate forward. That forward linear motion is converted into a tight rotational force. The power of Larson is incredible. Last year's bomber champion, of course, Hall is legendary. I smooth this box out and we're actually going to take a look how long his stride is. Let's make, let's make the mark right at the edge of the plate here, okay? And when you're done, Dave, let's see where you finish up. Ideally, you're going to want to finish up with the front foot there because, again, you're an older senior, Dave's 72, going on 73, and, and we want to make sure that we get enough step forward so that we can land and rotate the hips better. When you wind, if you take a nice long stride for a, an older senior, or actually even anybody, if you take a nice smooth stride and land, your hips are going to rotate easier because your weight transfer is easy. But the biggest thing, too, is to understand that the sink, like Dave says, when your hips start to turn, you have to start turning your wrist in sync, not over, but just turn your wrist just enough so it guides the bat head around in sync with the hips. And that way all your forward motion lands 
you've got that little bit of linear motion built up and it, everything rotates together and you can work on driving the ball level. Freeze, freeze, freeze. I stepped on it. Yep, he stepped it, okay. You notice at the end of that time and you gotta go out a little bit sooner? Turn the wrist right away, nice and gradually. Absolutely beautiful, Dave. How'd that feel? Feels great. And what's the difference? I should have, I should have stopped. Where'd I end up? Out here somewhere. Yep, your foot is landing right where we made the mark, so you're getting a decent stride. And the wrist turn, though, could you feel it that time? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, the ball jumped off there. For Dave, just that long, strong stride has made it more natural for him to drive the hands ahead and toward the wrists. Something he's been very deficit in. If you get that weight going forward, like Hall says, it's much easier to drive the hands and torque the wrists and drive the ball away from you. But of course, as Dave got tired, he started to slip back to his shorter stride again. An old habit. Okay, I think, now, remake your marks again. Remake your marks. Now go ahead and take a practice stride, Dave. I think you're getting to the point where you're getting just a little bit tired, but take, take a big knee back and there you go. See, I'm not, I haven't been getting out there. No, I, I know, that's why I'm making you do it. Do it again. See? All of a sudden you look like a young man. You look like a young man landing like that. You aren't all stiff and legs back. Do it again another time. And this is a good drill for you to do. See? Notice how your feet are on those two marks. Good. All right, now go back again. That looks perfect. Back again. Okay, now, all you got to do, Dave, is, is that one step. Just what you did, the wind, let yourself fall forward and land, and then turn the wrist. Let's, let's see you take a few more here. Wow. Great step. Okay. Again, Dave, on the mark, you're doing a great job on that drill, you know. You're bringing it back and you're landing beautifully, okay. You're just a little bit on these last two swings with the bat. You're ending up, you're winding, you're coming down, but you're ending up, you're turning the wrist, but you're ending up about right here, okay. And ideally, we'd like to see you about right here in contact, okay. About right here. You're just not quite turning enough, catching it back here, so try to... You know, as you land, as you land, wind and stuff, you know, let that come all the way through, okay? Turn that wrist and go all the way through. It's going to work fine. Good counterproductive. Hardly any load up at all, just 5% effort almost, just getting yourself to here, but then exploding this as quick as you can. I didn't realize for the last several years I've really shortened up my stride to the point of, of uh, look, really looking my age. Things I've got to work on is turning the wrist early. That's my worst point. Got to turn that wrist early and I've got to take a, a, a powerful stride with a, a nice hip turn. Get the, get the wrist to, to turn in conjunction with the hips. Dave North has got himself back in over 300 foot fence due to this strong stride and better hip rotation. Now we need to start working on a great hip drive, uh, drive of the hands and torque of the wrist to drive the ball away from you like you see Jeff Hall doing. Once Dave does this, he's going to add another 30 or 40 feet. We're going to cover this in the Swing Makeover Series number two where Dave works on developing a great drive of the hands and torque of the wrist to drive the ball away. We want to thank Mike and Antonell for being sponsors of this. Uh, we use the MV3 and the Denny Crine Psycho here on a baseball field, and the ball was just flying. It's 345 down the line, it's 410 center. The MV3 and the Denny Crine Psycho are extremely durable and uh, two of the hottest bats we've ever swung. Aww. Also want to thank Tenel for providing us shoes for the video shoot. Their turfs are incredible, and they really have a safety feature with the 360. Look at their website. Also want to thank uh, Pitch Safe for providing the safety screens, the durability and portability are amazing for those things, makes it easy to take them along with. And want to thank Softball Magazine for giving us access to the pros that we shot in the video here. Uh, Softball Magazine Spring Training is amazing. The magazine is absolutely over the top, beautiful, and covers a lot of things. And go to their website, they have uh, Bat Wars, it's just 
unbelievable the scope of things that you one stop for anything you want to know about softball. So I look forward to seeing you on part two, lesson two of the Swing Makeover Series, torquing the hips, driving the hands, and torquing the wrists. We'll see if we can get Dave North hitting the ball back up to 360 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if this bad boy. Good news. Let's see if this in range. Uh oh. You're not hitting the first ball out. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's another good miss. 